What's up, guys? Bang, bang. Lunch money. Bang, bang. Well, Wall Street's trying to get rich. The rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. Coming to you every day around noon, noon-ish. We're recording at 1 o'clock, so kind of miss that bucket, but we'll get our shit together. I've got the beautiful Polina Marinova, or today known as Prisoner Polina, in her uh, incarceration outfit. Um, what do we got for topics coming out hot on a Monday? Well... You know that stimulus package that was supposed to be for small businesses? Yes. Well, a bunch of the money ran out, which if you remember, I asked you last week if the money could run out. You thought it was a stupid question, but it wasn't because the money did run out. Uh, more than a dozen publicly traded companies actually got uh, part of the money. And they have, what is it? They have more than 10,000 employees. And um, a lot of them are public including Shake Shack, Potbelly, and a Tex-Mex restaurant chain. All right. So first of all, to clarify the record, so we, all, we don't have any fake news on here. You didn't ask me if the government's <laughs> PPP program could run out. You said, can the government run out of money? And the government can't run out of money because oh, the Federal Reserve has that's unlimited asked. liquidity. But yes, the PPP program ran out on Thursday morning, around 10.30 a.m., uh, less than two weeks after they started, $350 billion. It was soaked up by uh, all these businesses, only th estimations are three to 5% of applications were accepted and then they ran out of money. So that means that there's somewhere around 95% of small businesses that want access to the money. How are you uh, defining small businesses? Because obviously they, the way they, they define small businesses didn't quite work out. Well, again, small businesses is what it's intended for that still want access to capital. Part of the issue is that they have a distribution problem meaning that the way that they're determining who gets the money and who doesn't was just first come first serve. So if you're a local small business and the rules came out on Thursday night of the week prior, well, of course, by the time you get your application in, these large corporations with big uh, finance teams and lawyers and accountants and all this stuff, they'd already gotten their applications in. And so here's the really, really sad part. One, there's a lot of people who don't deserve to get this money or don't need the money who are getting the money. And then two, on top of that, what's even worse is that the people who are getting the money are taking the money from somebody else. So it's right. bad enough that they get it. It's even worse that if you take it from somebody else. Right. And so now we've got Main Street businesses that are not getting the help they need, but people like Shake Shack. Shake Shack is incredible. I love Shake Shack. I'm a big <laughs> Shake Shack fan. I think Danny Meyer is a genius, all this stuff. Shake Shack's a $1.6 billion market cap company that's publicly traded. They did over $400 million in revenue last year. They took $10 million in the PPP program. That $10 million got taken from a bunch of small businesses that didn't get access to it. A second data point, what do you think is the number one geographic region on a per dollar basis? For what? That received PPP loans. The Northeast? No. Washington, D.C. I saw a stat today. Washington, D.C.-based businesses on average received over $300,000 the rest or the average across the country is over 200,000. So they, they disproportionately are getting more of the money. Seems pretty interesting. Why would people who operate in the backyard of politicians be getting more money than others? I don't know. I'm just here to ask the questions. You guys go find the answers. Any last thoughts on big businesses? Uh, well, Shake Shack actually gave back the $10 million loan it received. I feel like that's an important thing to say. They, they did. But, but, why they but why are they getting congratulated? No, that they shouldn't be. I, my question is, why did they even get it in the first place? Well, because it, when there's free money available, nobody's a capitalist. They all, they all literally all become socialists. Oh, you're going to give me free money? Sure, I'll take the free money. Well, it's a loan. It, it's a loan that doesn't have to be repaid. If you keep your people on for a certain number of times. So here's what's going to end up being, here's what's going to be really, really sad is that they're all going to keep their employees until like September or October. Then they're going to fire them if this continues. Right. And then that brings me one last thing. I, big, I big business. We'll include this in here. Disney. Disney <laughs> has lost their minds. Bob Iger should be ashamed of himself. Hold on. Hold on. Bob Iger or Bob C? No, Bob Iger. Because Bob Iger went on for the last year and a half, went on this freaking uh, back padding tour saying how great a leadership and all this nonsense. But when push came to shove, here's what Disney's doing. Disney announced over the weekend they're going to fire 100,000 employees. Those 100,000 employees, by getting rid of them, they will save $500 million a month. That $500 million a month normally would just sound like, oh, look, they're not, their uh, amusement parks aren't open, etc. Revenue is down. 
of course, they can't sustain themselves. But then it came out that they're still prepared to give their executives their bonus plans. So the executives aren't giving up compensation, but they are firing people. And then on top of that, they have $1.5 billion dividend that they're expected to pay over the summer to shareholders. They're still going to pay that. And recently they went out and secured over $20 billion in lines of credit that they could draw. on. So if they didn't pay their dividend, they cut their executive bonus plan and they pulled on that um, $20 billion of line of credit, they would be able to sustain themselves for a year still paying all of those employees. They would have to lose a single employee. But you don't know the inner workings of Disney. Like maybe there was a reason they did that and not of course, something else. Because they believe that the government's going to take care of it. They're offloading their responsibility onto the American taxpayer. Why should we have to pay for Disney when Disney has the money to pay their employees? Right. I don't know. Lots of people will disagree, but I'm just saying, I think, again, it is their right. This is really important. It's their right to do this because we are a capitalistic society. I'm not arguing that uh, there should be any change to their right. What I'm saying is it's bad leadership. But the right leader would say, we're going to do whatever it takes to take care of our employees. We're going to keep our employees on Maybe. payroll, and we're going to make sure that we all get through this together because we believe if you're a Disney employee – you're a part of the Disney family and family takes care of family. Have you considered that maybe Bob C wanted to do that, but then Bob I, the executive chairman, came in and said, no, no, no. Are, are you a, a Bob C fan? I'm a Bob C fan. Okay. What's the next thing? Okay. Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus. Is Neiman Marcus a person? No, it's a group. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Neiman Marcus is preparing to seek bankruptcy protection as soon as this week. So you already, so basically they had a bunch of debt and they uh, defaulted. Yeah. Classic example. If you get over leveraged, if you don't have discipline, you end up getting screwed in bad times. Neiman Marcus in 2013, I believe, uh, they were part of a $6 billion leverage buyout by How Aries. How do you know this? Because I'm smart. Uh, and I read the internet uh, because Aries and another group uh, did a $6 billion leverage buyout. There's about $4.8 billion worth of debt uh, still oh God, on the he's company. Right. It's $4.8 billion. <laughs> hey, Joe, make sure we cut that clip. He's right. We'll just keep playing that on a loop. I, just, you, I know you didn't read this stuff beforehand. So how could you possibly know the exact numbers? Because I read the internet and I have a good memory. Uh, and so on top of all of that, they're going to have to file for bankruptcy. But my favorite part about the Neiman Marcus story is they have so much debt, about $4.8 billion, that they're actually negotiating with their creditors right now to get a loan so that they have enough capital on their balance sheet to make it through bankruptcy. This essentially, for those that don't understand what's happening, it's like saying, I'm in so much debt that I need money, so I'm going to take out more debt on top of it. Absolutely like insane. a bad idea. But again, all we're seeing is the virus is having an impact on retail stores, and then you overlay that with the macro trends well, of e-commerce. And, and I feel like uh, retail stores, especially the ones with physical locations, where that was the primary driver of revenue, really struggling right now because there's zero foot traffic. They were struggling before, but now it's like... When was the last time you went to a store and bought something? Like inside of a physical store? Yeah. Well, not recently because I did rent the runway. Because you were in prison? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was on probation. Um, so I did rent the runway because they deliver to your home and you don't have to go out and look at stuff in stores. Did you get that off rent the runway? No, because I had to pause rent the runway because I'm not going anywhere. Or is that now... from the New York Department of Corrections? Okay. let's. Oh, speaking of corrections, let's talk about drugs. <laughs> okay. I can't deal with this today. Okay. Um, Gilead. I had to look up how to pronounce it before this. But Gilead has a drug that's looking promising. It's called, I don't know how to pronounce that, remdesivir. Remdesivir. Rem, yeah. They had a cl clinical tri trial, and they're seeing rapid recoveries in fever and respiratory systems for people with COVID. So, I mean, they don't, they've only tested, what, 125 uh, coronavirus-infected patients who participated. 113 of them had severe symptoms. And then um, most patients recovered in less than a week and two died. That's a 1.6% death rate compared to the 4.9% overall U.S. rate. So, like, I'm not a doctor, but I kind of feel like uh, we, we could run a test and literally you could be like, well, I made these people drink water and these people didn't. And, oh, drinking water helps solve COVID or, or any sign, not, not just Well, the but that wouldn't be statistically significant. Well, what if some of them ended up uh, not dying and some did? 
and the test works. You just have well, the point. The point I'm getting at is like, yes, I get that they did it for 125 patients, but like, if you're going to get a drug approved and then go give it to people, or even worse, mandate that people take it, you got to do way more testing than totally. kind of an initial 125. And in this case, there was no control group, so that makes it tough. Um, yeah, I think I think we have a long way to go before we can say something is really promising. But but it's also it's also dangerous, right? That people are talking about this as if they're medical experts and they don't actually understand all the nuances of the medical field right. of drug development, etc. Because then you get all kinds of crazy theories and predictions and all the stuff that ended up not making sense. You guys should see like sometimes when he's sick or like something happens, he has like a thing on his eye. I've never been sick. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I'll be like, oh my God, like this old, you know, Bulgarian like remedy will help. And he's like, get out of here. It won't help. And then it helps. Just saying. She had me rub a penny on my eyeball <laughs> one time. I was like, are you going to poke my eyeball out? All right. What's going on with SpaceX? I care. Wait, no, more drugs. Hold on. I have one more for drugs. So apparently um the, the cartels are scrambling guys the, the global, drug cartels <laughs> yeah why the global drug trade the illegal drug trade is completely you know devastated by coronavirus why like because of their all their transportation shut down yeah and borders are shut and, and get this ready so um the traffickers rely on uh, like China supply chain for the chemicals to make really profitable drugs. And one of their main suppliers that shut down is in Wuhan. Wild. Well, listen, shout out to all my uh, drug dealers out there. No, I, you know, I, th there are no shout outs to your drug dealers. No, not like my drug dealers, <laughs> but like all the people who are drug dealers in but the why world. why are you shouting them out? Well, because they're having a tough economic time. I feel really bad for you guys that uh, all of a sudden your illegal activity is being shut down by the virus. I don't know. Maybe don't break the law. But I kind of feel like it's big business. you could end up in prison like me. <laughs> but, I mean, look, here's the opposite end of the argument is like what's the difference between uh, a drug cartel and a pharmaceutical company? Like the Sacklers? I mean, I'm not going to go there, but I'm just saying one of them just happens to have the law on the right side. But you could make the argument that the pharmaceutical companies are actually killing more people than you the could people. make that argument. You could make that argument because America's other epidemic is the opioid crisis. Exactly. I feel very strongly about this. Would you no particular would, would you legalize all drugs? No, I wouldn't. You what would you mean? Like all drugs? Like just every drug is legal now? No. Okay. Would you legalize marijuana? No. No. Why? Why wouldn't, why not? I think it's dumb. What's dumb? Marijuana. Why? I don't know. You're regretting saying this already, I can tell. <laughs> I, I just, I see the YouTube comments. Right <laughs> <in my head. laughs> I think that they should legalize marijuana. For old people? For everybody. Okay. If you can drink coffee and alcohol, why can't you smoke weed? Because it's different. Why is it different? It like messes with your brain. I mean, I, I, I. But what do you think alcohol does? Well, I know, I know. What do you think coffee does? Yeah. You could take ibuprofen. All right, guys, new plan. We're going to get Polina on the legalized marijuana train. Leave a comment and explain to her why she should do that. All right, what's going on with SpaceX? we got six minutes and a half. Okay, okay, okay. SpaceX. Um, so NASA on Friday set a launch date of May 27th for its first astronaut. How do you say that? Astronaut. Astronaut. <laughs> Mission. Go to prison for one day. You come back, can't say the word astronaut. Now who Now who can't speak? Mission from U.S. soil in nearly 10 years. So basically they had used to rely on the Russians to send people to space. Except for in 2011 was the last manned uh, space trip from U.S. soil, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, I didn't even read that. Well, anywhere. I just told it to you. No, you said 10 years ago. Technically it's only uh, nine. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so Elon Musk with SpaceX is um, going to send two people to the ISS in Florida on May 27th. Bob Be Benink and Doug Hurley. Now, here's the thing that's crazy. These people are, are older, right? They're not old, but they're 48 and 52. Like, you would think that most people who are going to get sent to space are, like, young, physically fit. Uh, oh, I'm like sure they're physically fit. Late 20s, early 30s. No, I know. But, like, like the picture I think a lot of people have of an astronaut is not a late 40s or early 50s person, right? Uh, and so, like, one shout out to being in physical condition at late 40s, early 50s to go to space. Cause it's incredibly taxing on your body, like all, all the G forces and everything. Uh, but also what you know about that. Oh, we going 10 G's. Let's go. It was going to space. Like literally go, you know how fast you got to go to get the space. No. 
fast. <laughs> Let me tell you, I ain't read that on the internet yet, but we'll figure it out. But it's fast. And so it's, it's really taxing on the body. But to be able to do that at 48 and 52 years old, like I feel like those dudes, like shout out to those dudes. Astronauts are cool. They're awesome. And guess what the, the uh, capsule is called? I don't know. Dragon. Oh, the dra Yeah, I mean, that's SpaceX's name of their capsule. Oh. <laughs> okay, what, last dance. What's going on with okay. last dance? So, okay. So last dance. Do you know what that is? <laughs> I made her watch it last night. We watched the Michael Jordan documentary last night. Um, and I learned all about Scotty P. Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen. We say Scotty P. You just give him a fucking rap name. <laughs> I like that one. Um, and so before this podcast, or what is this <laughs> video? Video. Cast. Are you are you high right now? Did you smoke marijuana before we did this? Why are you laughing like this? <laughs> just go. <laughs> we watched Last Dance last night. It's a fantastic documentary. If you haven't seen it yet, the first and second <laughs> episode. All right, guys, we, we may be getting a new co-host after this. Uh, the first and second episode uh, yeah. was last. Are you crying? Uh, was last night, and then there's uh, episodes three through ten will come out two every single Sunday for the next couple of Sundays. Uh, it's all about Michael Jordan uh, in the nineties, and uh, it goes all the way back to when he first entered the NBA. Uh, he's the greatest of all time. Don't at me. You can leave a comment if you disagree, but I'm not responding to you because Michael Jordan is definitely the greatest of all time. Is he? Yeah, not even close. I don't know, Scotty. You know why? Because of this. He got six championships. That's the point of playing sports is to win. He won Wait, more than anybody else. Championships in basketball? N no, no, uh, NASCAR. Well, no, but he went, he had a baseball career. Uh, allegedly, because oh. I don't know if you can call that a career. He basically spent a couple of months <laughs> trying to do batting practice and it didn't go so well. Facts. So anyway, I think Scotty Pippen is- Why do you like Scotty Pippen because so he's, much? Because he's- He's like the underrated underdog, and everybody. He's not the underdog. He was the second best player in the NBA. Everyone yeah, but knew he was, was second paid best. not like the best, second best player in the NBA. Because he's dumb and he took a dumb basketball deal. He signed a deal for seven years at, in 1990 and agreed to only for 18 million bucks. <laughs> laughing. And he should okay. have gotten paid more money, uh, but he signed a long term deal. And also, they told him not to sign it, even though own, own, his own ownership was like, "Hey, don't sign that deal." But he signed it anyways. But can't you just? renegotiate later if the owner will agree to it but the owner said no oh, wow. that was his whole position because when you sign the deal that's the deal so is the owner basically the owner is willing to lose their best player because they don't want to renegotiate their uh contract he couldn't go anywhere oh why because he's under contract oh wow that so sucks. he at, at one point he demanded a trade so he could basically say i'm not playing unless you trade me or so you could try to force their hand but he can't go sign with another team because he's under contract yeah that's how sports works that sucks. By the way, let's not feel bad for the guy. He got paid eighteen million dollars in nineteen ninety. Right now, by the way, Jordan got paid like twenty million bucks a year, so he made a little bit more cash. Am I am I the Michael Jordan or the Scott Pippen of this uh, video cast? Uh, do you want to know for <laughs> sure? You're Tony Kukoc. You don't even know who that is. Who? Yet. Tony Kukoc. Kukoc. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell kind of name is that? The name of one of the players <laughs> on the Bulls in the nineties. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll look him up. Wait till you, hit, you know what part of the documentary you're gonna love. No. Wait till we get to the Dennis Rodman part. Oh, the guy with the blonde hair? Uh, green he, blonde hair. was one of the colors of his hair. He also wore a wedding outfit at yes, one point. Yes, I saw that. And he also is the guy who went to North Korea and became friends with... <gasps> Wait, them. yes, Dennis Rodman. Oh, my God. Okay, guys, there's this amazing documentary about Dennis Rodman's... It's, it's called The Last Dance. No, Dennis Rodman's friendship with um, King, Kim Kim Jong -un. Jong un Yes. And they play basketball together. He's basically, like, promoting world peace. <clears throat> through basketball and friendship because he's kind to his friends. It's Dennis Rodman's the man. <laughs> he's a fucking gangster. Um, all right. Uh, lunch money winners from last week. There's three of them. I don't think that we pulled them up because uh, Plina oh. didn't click on them. Uh, give us two seconds. We don't have our shit together right now. Hold on a second. It, it, no, the email is the lunch money winners. <laughs> so right where it says lunch money winners, those are the ones I picked. Okay. I picked this week. No, I picked one. You picked one. You did. Uh, so the first one is Nolan Royale. Uh, the second one is um, wow. We today was a rough day, guys. I'm so sorry. Kalina, what are you doing? I don't you, know. You're, okay. you're just clicking around. <laughs> this one's my uh, a great one. Uh, this is Cameron Archibald. Uh, won one of the subscriptions, and his Twitter handle is at I'm the Tool. I M T H E T O O L. So go check him out. What's the third one? Hurry up. Okay. 
Uh, this one I can't really pronounce. Wait, so it's the... at F C L R L Y G P H T I C. We've DM'd you. Respond. Give us your email. We'll get you the free subscriptions to all three of you. I don't know why we picked three. We said we were only going to pick two, but we felt like being kind. We are now out of time because you had a laughing attack. I'm I think so I sorry. think that you got high know. during the middle of the episode and laughed so hard. I, I drank coffee. Maybe that's what it was. That makes you laugh. All right. You need to go back to prison. Uh, <laughs> do you have any last words before we end? I don't, but be, well, be kind to your friends. That's it? Yeah. All right, guys. Listen, we appreciate it. Lunch money while Wall Street's trying to get rich. The rest of us is trying to get our lunch money right. Tomorrow we will come to you earlier, hopefully before noon, and maybe we will get a different co-host who doesn't erupt in laughter Losing in the middle <laughs> of the episode. So thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow.